Here we are with the infamous PVM 20M2U. This is a 600 TV line professional monitor which boasts advanced on-screen display control and settings which I love it for and hate it for. This one's getting no high voltage to the tube and also has the red tally light of death on. Build date of October 2000. So let's get inside and see what we can see. Have the side and rear shell screws already removed. Here we're opening it up, taking a look inside. Pretty dang spotless. No bulging caps. No problems from a visual perspective. Here you can see having the on-screen display controlled deflection options adds fancy doohickeys to your yoke. Here we have a little badge on the metal frame shielding for the tube. And we're gonna start out by folding this power supply board down and doing some testing, taking some voltage readings off this board. Pop off our little probe rubbers here so we can get some penetration. And our 12 volt circuit is outputting 12 volts just fine. There's our 115 volt circuit. Our negative 15 should be good. Our five volt is a tad low, but I'm sure 4.84, 4.85 is still within spec. So now I plugged it in and we're gonna test it without the chassis board plugged in to see what those are outputting without a load on them. And we can see that that five volt corrected itself. So I'm not sure if that 0.2 volt voltage drop means anything. Um, with the chassis board plugged in and it's under load, I, I could see the five volt dropping a little bit, but if anybody knows if that's an issue with this particular monitor, please let me know in the comments. But I assume 4.85 with the chassis board connected is sufficient. So from here, I'm gonna discharge those larger capacitors. This is just a large resistor I'm using. Um, and we're gonna take this heat shielding off do a little visual inspection on this power supply board and just like the chassis board it's super clean pristine looking no bulging or leaking caps that I can visually detect so we'll go ahead and throw the ESR meter on there see if we can find anything that jumps out with a with a high ESR or a failed reading. And the most I find is a couple that are still in good condition, but just kind of borderline high ESR. So for now, we will take that as the power board is fine. And we will move on to disassembling this monitor. Here I'm disconnecting all those chassis grounds to that input board. And I'm going to slide that main chassis board back just a hair so that it can clear the neck board. There's a tab on either side of this input board that locks it down to that chassis frame. So just unclip those and pull it back. Um, these connections here are just almost like friction fit banana style terminal connectors. Pop them out and then your input board is free to remove. Um, a side note that's kind of interesting, there's a bodge wire on both of the input boards from the 20M2U and 14M2U. From here, I'm just going to pull that chassis tray out a little bit, enough to uh, disconnect all those front panel connections and pull this tray on out with the chassis board much easier to slide in and out than uh, the 40 series PVMs that I've worked on in the past. All those uh, 40 series PVMs, it's, it's like the, the plastic that that chassis tray sits on gets warped over time and they're really a pain in the ass to pull out. 
So here's the chassis board removed. If you draw a line down the middle, the right hand side of the board is what we're gonna be addressing. Of course, we have the flyback, the bottom right, and above it, we have our horizontal and vertical deflection circuits. And this is gonna be the main area of attention that we're gonna give to replacing capacitors. Here on the bottom side of the board, you can see some discoloration from those high temperature areas, those vertical and horizontal IC transistors that are attached to heat sinks. You can see uh, how the heat has affected the board a little bit over the years. Nothing bad, but just thought I'd point that out. So now we're gonna remove the screws that secures the chassis to that um, slide in frame piece. Be sure to get the one on the flyback. So I didn't see that one for a minute. Once you get all the screws out, your chassis board will release from the tray. You can throw that sucker to the side. Here we are just going through removing all the capacitors in that Savon Pat cap list doing this at a high speed to save you from falling asleep and from your eyeballs melting. You're welcome. Here's a look at the capacitors that we're replacing. You can see the one in the center has a small bulge to it. And now we're just going back and repopulating those spots with capacitors. I went with Nichicon 105C temperated low ESR whenever I could. Uh, when I couldn't find those, I went with the standard 105C rated Nichicons. Now at this point, I kind of set this project to the side and ordered a handful of more capacitors to replace around the flyback. And I kind of just wish I would have done that whole half of the board like I like I normally do. But here's the, the new caps when they came in. I ordered two sets because I got to do this same recap on that 14 M2U that I showed in that last recent haul video. So I'm starting to get a lot of these cap kits laying around. So I made sure to label it so I don't get my old ass confused. So those new caps I ordered, I'm installing those and removing the old ones. I'm gonna go back, solder everything in, snip the legs. You know the deal, damn it. You know how it goes. If you think this is painful to watch, just imagine having to do it in real time. That makes it even more frustrating when you run into additional problems, which you will see soon. Here we have a little look-see of the chassis board with all the fresh capacitors installed. I uh, color-coded them with the red tops. That way I know what has been replaced and what has not been replaced. I figured why I have this thing broken down it would be a good time to replace those neck board capacitors. You'll have to cut that little goober there, that gray silicone to remove the neck board but I believe that there's only four or five caps on this neck board and you're pumping a high frequency through there so why not replace them? Right, here we are just getting those caps soldered back in. Here's a look at the board finished. Um, I think I ended up reflowing that neck board socket, the solder pads on that as well. And straightening these caps out a little bit. And we will be ready to reassemble and test and do some cussing. Oh yeah. At this point, I could probably reassemble this blindfolded as many times I've had to tear this thing down. More on that in a moment. So here we are buttoned back up. 
All that's left is to put this power supply board back in its place. And we can plug this bad girl in and do some testing. Plug her on in. Flip her on around. Push the button. We have lights. We have high voltage. We have static. We have snap, crackle, pop. So we are getting high voltage to the tube now. It's throwing up a raster image. We have no sync. And takes me a second to realize what's going on. I have no tally light, which is good. Oh yeah. Green indicator is on. High voltage, feel the static, good so far. Try to change the source, no bueno, nothing. None of those input board buttons are doing anything. I jostle the connection, I unplug it, I plug it back in, I try to clean it, no go. I end up having to tear this whole monitor back down damn near to the bare tube just to get that front panel board out. I decide I'm gonna swap it with the front panel board from that 14 M2U. And all of this, the, the tray framing from the bottom had to be dismantled to access this little board. Quite a bit of shit had to be tore down just to get to that little front input board. Not happy about it, but we must push on and test the one out of the 14 inch. So here's the one out of the 20 inch. It looks pristine. I can't see anything wrong with it. All the resistors had resistance. So what, what the hell? I don't know. But here's the old one from the 20 inch next to the 14 inch. I got the 14 inch front panel board back into the 20 inch and now we must reassemble this all over again and push on don't you worry this won't be the last time we reassemble this thing here we are all back together ready to plug back in and test Plug in the power cord. I'm gonna switch to my crappy phone camera. Push the button, snap, crackle, pop. Notice that loud lightning bolt arc you hear. But look, front panel lights. Oh yeah, she's more alive than usual. So now the front panel is working. I'm able to access the menu the on-screen display, all the settings. I'm able to swap inputs. Things are looking up and I'm happy right now, but I need to investigate what that snap, crackle, pop was. So I set up my phone, cycle the power and notice this lightning bolt shooting out of these grounding fingers. Now in most CRTs, there's a grounding, like a braided cable. This one has these fingers. Well, I'm assuming they're a different metal composition than that tube framing. And so oxidation over the years has built up. But I noticed these little tabs sticking out of the grounding fingers. So I decide to solder in at their own dedicated grounding cable and attach it to the tube frame where this other chassis ground connected and see if we can't get rid of that Raiden lightning bolt shooting out the back of this thing. And at this point, I'm wondering if that static discharge to ground um, is what originally caused some issues with this monitor. So here we are. We got a direct ground. We're going to test it out. Power it on. Much better. Much, much better. I also cleaned those fingers bent them in to contact the aquadag better lightly cleaned the aquadag itself so that's 
three issues solved. We have power, we have a raster image. We got rid of the lightning bolts and our front panel works at this time. I tested it with S video, bright, vibrant tube, very happy. I'm ecstatic. I'm bragging to myself inside my mind. Pretty happy with this tube and with uh, the image on S video. So I, I plug in my mister, I test RGB looks great i go in and calibrate the geometry the focus the image the settings everything have it looking great i play for about 30 minutes and i notice the bottom of the screen starts distorting and stretching out then it turns into this vertical jitter then it turns into a full vertical roll it's like i lost vertical sync or a capacitor failed before my eyes or a component went out before my eyes and I'm pretty bummed out. Now, I'm not gonna lie. Adjusting vertical hold has no effect on this rolling other than slowing it. Now it's been said these 20 M2Us are kind of soft and, and the tubes ain't that good in them, but I was pleasantly surprised with this one. It, it, it had nice crispy scan lines and this is what I'm left with now. Even the on-screen display shows that vertical jittering and jumping. So I dismantle it once again. I pull the power board from the 20 inch and I substitute it with the power board from the 14 inch just to rule that out because of that previous uh, five volt circuit that was outputting a little low. I wanted to alleviate that as a possible cause so we got the 14 M2U's power supply plugged in. Testing it again. Same vertical roll. At this point, I pull out the chassis board again. I double check all my caps. I find C588. That was one of the short leaded caps that I just had to quickly tack in. And I, I believe that I forgot to come back and solder that one in all the way. And so I come back, reflow it. I'm just sure in my mind that that was the issue. And so I'm excited that I figured out the problem. Same vertical roll. At this point, I'm looking at the vertical circuit in the service manual and I'm doing some barbaric vertical transistor testing, looking for that diode voltage drop. And I'm wondering if this sync separator chip is the issue. So I reflow pins in the vias, same fucking rolling. I come back, I reflow the horizontal and vertical output transistors and double and triple check all the caps that I have installed and I can't find the issue. At this point in time, I have a replacement sync separator IC chip in hand, but I haven't installed it yet because it looks like a giant pain in the ass because there's tons of surface mounted components around all those pins. Um, and I just don't know what to do. I could shotgun the whole vertical circuit, replace the transistors. Um, recap that whole circuit again, try that sync separator, but I don't want to just shotgun things. I really feel like I'm at a crossroads where I need to step my game up, order an oscilloscope, learn what the hell I'm doing. Cause at this point, up to this point, I've just been a glorified capacitor replacer. There's always this other option here. If you have any suggestions, Leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe.